All right, so I'm in the, the practice here of choosing my flat local colors. And as I mentioned before, you want your flat local color to be successful and to read in the way you want on a black background, on a gray background, and on a white background. If you only choose them on a white background, they tend to look really dark, even though they're not, right? So middle gray is usually my default for choosing them. And that also does a good job of reminding you that if you want a light color that's lighter than middle gray, you need to fill it in, even if it's white. White is an option for you. Though I don't usually use solid white as one of my fills. I'll use an off-white, right? So I have the problem of the handle of my megaphone here. I want the V to be really clear, but I want the handle of the megaphone not to be the same color as the skin. And because that is not a contained shape, how can I change that? Well, if I turn off the line art, right, I can simply use my lasso to make a break in between the handle and the hand. So if I make that break right here, just take out a little chunk of color. I have to be on my flat color to do it, right? Okay, now I can use my paint bucket and I can choose a different color to fill in the handle. Did it slip? Let's see. Like so. Okay, but the only problem with that is when I turn on my black line art, I'm going to have this little empty gap where I use my lasso. So then I need to use my paint bucket again and fill that in with the color I choose. So you don't have any gaps. You use the magic wand to select. And you do that from your line art layer. But then once everything is filled, and I'm close to having everything filled, right? then I don't need to worry about selecting from my line art anymore. So filling everything up. All right, now that I've got kind of my flat colors, I'm going to work with them a little bit more. <laughs> right? So you want to be on the magic wand, have contiguous turned on. And sometimes you just want to use your lasso and you can see what your color is doing by turning off that layer. So I might need to go back now and clean this up just by filling it with the purple color. All right, so now that I have something for all the flats. You can see that all the colors are slightly different. Now I can choose with option to kind of move them around. Like maybe I make my check mark red. Maybe I make um, this one a darker blue. Maybe I find it from my inspirations, right? And hold down option. Something like that. I'm just making little adjustments here. Let's see, maybe a green would be nice. And you're getting a sense of your color palettes. And I can just replace them using that paint bucket tool. And you see how it will show you the color if you hold down option with the paint bucket, like what color you're stealing. Let's do a purple. 
or the O, a darker purple. Something like that. But hold down Option. Let's put a little bit more blue into that. Like so. All right, so now, what do I think of these colors? Let me turn off my references. They work well on gray. How do they work on black? They work pretty well on black, though that V and that O are a little bit harder to see. So how about I select those with my magic wand, hold down Shift, and now instead of filling them with different colors, maybe I just go to Image Adjustments and Levels, and I'm just going to brighten them a little bit in their midtones. Right. So they show up a little bit more. And then maybe I use image adjustments and go to hue saturation and I'm just going to push them a little bit more towards the warms you know like so and that shows up a little bit better I can even just brighten them or darken them yeah so that works pretty well on the black that works pretty well on the gray. And it looks a little dark on the white just because that white's so strong. So now we go to our next phase. So once you have your, your flat local color, go ahead and lock it. Remember how flat local color is very different than flatting color. Like flatting color is just getting it filled in. Flat local color is actually making your choices. This is something I enjoy doing, which is a little odd. But because I have both, and because this, when you just kind of click and fill, like paint by numbers, you end up with pretty generic colors. I like to take the opacity of my flat colors, if I've done flatting, and just mix them a little bit with my flatting colors. And you can see how that makes them all a lot more complicated. So now we get kind of those, those really complex color <laughs> combinations. Now, you might like it, you might not. It's a way of kind of interrogating what you've chosen. So I think I like it right about there. And then what I'll do is I'll make a duplicate of both. So Command-J of both and then Command-E to merge them into my ultimate flat colors, which is at 100%. So I'll mark that as as red. So that's the color I really want. And you see it just varied it a little bit. Okay. And I'll show you other things we can do with that. So I'm going to lock all of these. So now I've made the most basic sandwich, right? I have either white bread or black or gray bread or black bread on the bottom. I recommend gray at this point. And I have black bread at the top with the line art. And then in between, I have my, my coloring, my, my cheese. Okay, I'm going to save Command S. The next thing we do is play with lighting. And that is what's called duotone. So duotone coloring takes that local flat color that you chose and splits it into a light and a dark. This is done in a hard-edged way on this Ninja Turtle example. And then this is done in a soft-edged way in this past student example of a character design. But notice that every place there was a local color, like orange for the hair, this kind of peach for the skin, the blue for the glove, it stays the same color throughout, it just has different values of it. So lighter and darker versions of that same color. So here's a really simple way to play with it. You're, you're, we're simply going to take these colors, duplicate them, and then use levels to darken them or lighten them. And I'm going to start with hard-edged, just like this, just like this, because that's a little bit more precise. Soft-edged is, is always easier to add. So we're going to turn it from local flat color 
into duotone hard edge color. So how do I do it? It's only after you finish your flat local color. I'm going to duplicate the flat local color. And then I'm going to go darker with it. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and I'm going to push it all darker for the shadow tones. This is just basic, basic duotone here. Then I'm going to use my lasso, and I'm going to cut out where I think the highlights should be. So if I'm being really basic, right, I'm just going to cut out highlights on the top edge of things. This is cut edge because I'm physically cutting out shapes that are going to be my highlights. And then just hitting delete. Right. And that's a way of doing duotone cut edge. Now what's tricky is you can do it across multiple color shapes at the same time like this. I can do it on the hand. And remember, this is done on a duplicate. We're making the sandwich more complicated. On a duplicate of your flat line art. And I'm going to keep it pretty simple because my design's pretty simple. And maybe I'll do a little bit of a, a rim highlight at the bottom here. At the bottom here. Nope, a little bit thicker. Now this is what's called straight duotone, because all we did, we didn't change the color at all of our shadow. All we did was darken its midtones. So in color theory, that's just changing the value, not changing the hue. And I like it there. I don't like it there. That's a little too fussy. So I'm going to modify my selection. All right, so these backgrounds that I have, the black, the gray, the white, they're just to help me choose colors. And you can see when I have the black background, all the black line art becomes invisible and you just see the strength of your colors and your shapes. So I'm working on what's called duotone color here, but this is a certain type of duotone color that is called cut edge or hard edge. In animation, it's called cell shading. So duotone, I'll just call it duotone hard edge or duotone color hard edge. And I'm going to mark that with, let's see, green for lettuce. So what does it look like without that? It looks like this. So do I think the duotone is helping? Yes. Are there any other places I can cut out highlights? Well, let's see. Maybe I do kind of a ripple like that. And it's a little fussy, right? But I'll show you a technique I like. So I can do little things like that, little effects. But a better technique, I think, let me undo those, is to use my magic wand and select all these shapes that remain. Right? And now all I'm going to do is use my move tool and I'm just going to shift them down a little bit. This is called offsetting. Whoops. Let's move them. I can use my arrow keys as well. I'm just going to move them down and to the right, kind of like a drop shadow, but with duotone coloring. 
I can also do command 